What kind of person pops into your head when you think of nuns? Maybe Sister Wendy Beckett, or Whoopi Goldberg in Sister Act, or Maggie Smith in Sister Act, or Mary Wicks in Sister Act, or the whole Sister Act crew. Maybe you think of those nuns from Father Ted. Maybe you were taught by some nuns. Or maybe you think of Mother Teresa. I've talked about Agnes Boyaksu at length in a previous video, but today we're going to talk about a nun who's never going to be considered saintly. Today's topic is a nun who reveled in thievery, violence, and general rowdy behaviour. If I were to compare her to anyone, I would say she was the nun equivalent of Diamanda Hagen. I'm talking about Catalina de Orazo, also known as La Munia Alferez, the lieutenant nun. And as you can probably notice, I'm currently modelling my hairstyle after hers. Catalina de Orazo was born in 1585 in San Sebastian in the Basque region in Spain. When she was four, her family put her in a Dominican convent run by her aunt where she stayed till she was 15. When, and I quote, In the final year of my novitiate, toward the end of it, when I was about to take my final vows, I got into a quarrel with one of the sisters, Donna Catalina de Lurilli, who had entered into the convent and taken the veil after the death of her husband. She was a big, robust woman. I was but a girl. And when she beat me, I felt it. And so, Catalina did what any 15-year-old girl who had been locked in a convent her entire life would do. She stole the keys of the convent and ran away. She cut her hair short, turned her habit into some men's clothes, and took on the name of Francisco Loya. Then she made her way to Valladolid and became page boy to the king's secretary. While she was there, her father came to visit, and she attended on him, and apparently he didn't recognize her. This is common in her story. She runs into members of her own family quite a lot, and they never recognized her. She even serves in the army under her own brother, and then later unwittingly kills him in a duel. She was the second in a duel for somebody, and her brother was there, and she stabs him, and she goes to the funeral, and is sad. But she also kills a hell of a lot of people. I don't know what the final body count for this entire book is, but in the first few pages, she has at least assaulted four or five people. And she's quite quick to violence, and very good at getting away with it. She leaves Spain and travels to Chile on her uncle's boat, who doesn't recognise her, naturally. When she gets to Chile, she robs her uncle and goes off on her own, travelling South America under the name of Alonso Diaz Ramirez de Guzman. While in South America, she actually enlisted in the Spanish army, and fought in the conflict against the native Aruco people. Naturally, because people see her as a hard-working, adventurous young man, she picks up quite a few female admirers and gets very close to marriage on one or two occasions. Prior to enlisting in the army, she actually lost a job because she was caught behaving inappropriately with her boss's sister-in-law. On another occasion, she actually agreed to get married to a girl that Arazo described as ugly as the devil himself because she would get some nice clothes and some work. At the same time, she was involved with the niece of a local vicar. And like every woman the lieutenant nun comes across, it's really a relationship that's based on the fact that the lieutenant nun wants clothes, work, money, or some sort of stability for a little while so she can settle down for a bit and then move on. Because very quickly, Catalina de Arazo will just hightail it out of there and leave everything behind or kill someone and have to run away. Not long after abandoning the vicar's niece and the devil ugly girl, the lieutenant nun joined up with the army again, quashed a rebellion, and brutally murdered a bunch of native people. While her life story is interesting to read, it's a swashbuckling tale, she's not the nicest protagonist. She's the kind of person who if you were rude to her by maybe sitting in front of her at a theatre, she would later attack you which she does. Anyone who's rude to her or disagrees with her in any way just gets a, a knife in the face. She'd cut you up good over a game of cards just because. She essentially travelled around South America, getting into scraps, being generally violent and using the church as a get out of jail free card. And I mean that literally because at that time, if you broke the law and claimed sanctuary in a church, there was nothing anyone could do. In fact, even if you weren't in a church, you could get sanctuary by calling on the church. As Catalina de Arauzo did when she was sentenced to death. I spent a full two days confessing. On the third, mass was held in the jail. 
and when the priest had taken communion, he gave it to me and turned back to the altar. I instantly spat the wafer round to my hand, shouting madly, I call on the church, I call on the church. It was that easy to get out of being hanged. You just had to take communion and spit it in your hand and say, I call on the church, take me to the church. And of course they took her to the church because they had to, because she was holding on to the body of Christ and that was a big deal. It's a really bizarre loophole that was closed. It's a really bizarre loophole that was closed not too long, historically speaking, after the events of this book. Although you can't really go around stabbing and slashing people all your life because eventually that catches up to you, and it did with Catalina de Arazo. At age 35, she's once again on the run from the law, and because she was fearing for her life, she confesses to a bishop that she is in fact female. Despite confessing to the bishop, she still had to be examined by some old women who concluded that she was in fact female and also a virgin. And he's so pleased that he pretty much said, I will do anything to help you lead a religious life again. And she goes off and becomes a nun again. Eventually she made her way back to Europe where she met Pope Urban and got special dispensation from him to dress in men's clothing. I'll repeat that. She got permission from the Pope to continue being a cross-dresser. That's a pretty exceptional achievement, even by modern standards. It was after this that Catalina de Arazo wrote her memoirs, which it's believed she wrote to help her petition the Spanish crown in order to get compensation for her service in South America. But there are things you have to consider when you read a biography like this one. There's an agreement that Catalina de Arazo existed and that she wrote a book. Whether she actually wrote it herself or dictated it to somebody is up for debate. And whether or not there's a little bit of artistic license taken either by her biographer or herself or later authors is a question one can ask when reading this book. It's quite likely not a wholly honest portrayal of her life. A lot of it feels very fictionalised. The lieutenant known as this individualistic, ambiguous, troublesome, mannish woman who rejects feminine behaviour. From what I understand, part of the ambiguity of the whole thing is in the original translation, when Catalina is doing feminine things, the feminine adjectives are attached to what she's doing, and when it's masculine, it's masculine adjectives, which adds to the ambiguity of the whole thing. And then in her first language, Basque, there aren't any gendered adjectives, so it's helps to add into the whole general ambiguity of the person of Catalina de Arazo. Her memoirs were first given to a publisher in 1625, first published in English in 1908 as the Lieutenant Ensign, and there are no original copies of the memoir left. The oldest surviving copy is in the Royal Academy of History in Madrid, and that dates from 1794, and wasn't published until 1839. And you'll never quite know how much is true or how much is embellished. Although when you're reading a older historical text, it's quite likely that you're not going to run into a 100% objective portrayal of history. Embellishments were part of the course in older histories. History didn't become so focused on empiricism until the 19th century when historians started taking the lead of Leopold von Renke and his principle of wie ist eigentlich gewesen, that is, to show history as it really was. Despite the fact it's quite likely a lot made up, the Lieutenant Nun's story became quite famous. There are plays, novels, and two films about it, both of whom are in Spanish, so I would never be able to feature them on this show because uh, I can't speak Spanish and I can't find subtitled versions of them. I really recommend picking up a copy of this. It's short, it's very entertaining. Whether it's 100% true or not, it's a story of colonial South America, Spanish Empire, gender, and stab-happy nuns. What more could you want?